With Procast, you can easily track your employees' paid time off and sick leave balances through automated processes. Some of these processes include accruing paid leave hours earned by employee, updating earned hours available on employee timesheets, and creating adjusting journal entries to record paid leave liabilities and expenses. This training series is broken into two videos. Video 1, PTO Setup. This is the initial creation of the pieces needed to complete the PTO accrual process. These steps are completed when you initially implement our PTO tracking and each subsequent calendar year, which will be covered shortly. Video 2, the PTO accrual process. This is the breakdown of the automated process used to accurately track your employees' paid time off and sick leave balances. These steps are completed after each timesheet period and are covered in the next video. Let's jump into the system to begin setting up our paid time off and sick leave information. Step 1. PTO Setup PTO Setup is accessed under the Setup menu and Personnel submenu. This form is used to set up the default accounts for the automated PTO accrual process. Because this is the foundation, it should only be edited during its implementation. However, you can modify existing accounts or add new accounts if there is a substantial change to your PTO policies or chart of accounts. This form allows for up to three types of paid leave to be tracked in the system. PTO or vacation, sick or personal, and other. For each type you wish to track, the following default accounts must be established. Earned. This account is used to record the accrued paid leave hours earned in the PTO hours accrual journal. Used. This account is used in employee work authorizations for recording the paid leave taken and is what employees will ultimately see on their timesheets. Two types of accounts can be used here. If you are tracking PTO using the income statement method, a fringe expense for accrued leave is recommended. However, if you are tracking PTO using the balance sheet method, a liability for accrued leave is recommended, but it must be different from the earned account. We are going to use the income statement method for the remainder of these training videos. This method is Procast preferred because it self-adjusts for pay rate changes. However, both methods are fully supported by the system. Expense. This account is used by the system to record an adjustment to the paid leave expense at the end of the accounting period, which will be seen on the income statement. Liability. This read-only account code is used by the system to record an adjustment to the paid leave liability and must match the earned account. Select the Accrue Expense checkbox to use the system to calculate and create the PTO accrual journal entries automatically. One thing to note, you will need a separate earned account for each unique used account in the system in order to properly calculate the adjustment amounts. Now that our default accounts have been set up, let's navigate to PTO accrual by person to set up default hours for our employees. Step two, PTO accrual by person. PTO accrual by person is also accessed under the setup menu and personnel submenu. This form is used to set your default accrual hours for all of your employees. It is typically accessed whenever there is a change to an employee's standard accrual hours or a new employee is onboarded. This setup screen is unique because most of it is read-only. Code, personnel name, seniority date, pay type, and full-time part-time 
are established on the employee's personnel records. This information will automatically pull into the screen. The three columns we are interested in editing are PTO or vacation hours, sick or personal hours, and other hours. These hours are important because they are what the system will use as your defaults when you begin the PTO accrual process. On this screen, you can edit each employee's defaults for the hours they typically accrue each pay period. This will save you time as you track PTO in the system. Now that our accounts and hours have been established, let's create an internal study task to track the balancing of this information each year. Step three, PTO project and task creation. Projects and tasks are located under the projects menu. Tying a project and task to PTO and sick leave information is important because they track employee balances for each year in a straightforward manner, which makes it easier for reporting. In PROCAS, we recommend setting up the following work breakdown structure to track accrued leave information. Work breakdown structure level one or the five character project. Because this information is not directly tied to a contract, it makes sense to track it internally. Use the first available internal study task. For example, S0001. Level one's creation only happens once when you first implement the PTO process and will be used in perpetuity. You will have to create this level before moving on to complete your tasks. To move forward, please make sure the following two items are completed. First, the checkbox in the bottom right hand corner indicating PTO must be selected for the system to know this task is being used to track accrued leave. This will automatically carry over into any subsequent tasks that use this project code. Second, the WBS Lengths tab needs to be completed with the recommendation of level one at five characters, level two at three characters, and level three at two characters. Levels two and three can be up to four characters if needed. However, the PROCAST preferred way is three and two characters. Work breakdown structure level two. We recommend identifying the type of hours being accrued at this level. In this example, the letters P, T, and O have been added to identify PTO or vacation accruals. However, if you are tracking sick leave, we'd recommend using S, I, and C or something similar. Work breakdown structure level three. For this third and final segment of our task, we recommend listing out the calendar year for which the leave information takes place. In this example, 20 is used to indicate calendar year 2020. This task will be a part of the charge code that is pushed out to your employees to record PTO. We recommend filling out some optional fields such as the project name, the starting date, and the ending date to provide more descriptions for your employees. Creating these tasks for paid time off and sick leave will need to be established each year. As a tip, levels two and three can be created at the same time if you type your task out to the third level and complete the record. Now that our tasks for PTO and sick have been created, Let's navigate to the work authorization screen to create the charge codes for our employees. Step four, work authorization by task. Work authorization by task is located under the projects menu. The last required setup item is to create charge codes that your employees will use when recording PTO or sick leave on their timesheets. On the tasks we just created, we will need to list out the employees eligible for our PTO policies. When entering each employee, 
Five columns are important for establishing PTO. Account. The account listed for accrued leave charge codes must be the same as the used account from PTO setup. Pay code. The pay code selected for accrued leave should match the type of leave taken. Use V for vacation or PTO and S for sick leave. Start and end dates. Specify the dates for which your employees can use PTO hours. You have the ability to restrict this range under the Company Information menu followed by the Settings tab. If you choose to enforce work authorization parameters company-wide, employees will not be able to charge more than their budgeted hours or outside the specified range. PTO. The PTO checkbox must be selected for each user's PTO to update appropriately when the accrual process is used. As a tip, if you have already set up work authorizations in the past, you can use the copy function to populate your new charge codes. Specifications can be made on this screen to pull over which employees you would like for the new year. We will get to budgeted hours used hours adjustment, and accrual date in the next video as we go through the automated accrual process. All of the setup is now complete to process our first accrual.